welcome back so in this video we'll talk about spring data binding so this is going to be one of the very fundamental video and without this video you cannot go forward with this course because we'll be talk about a lot of fundamentals right so uh, doesn't matter uh, i mean how much experience you have but you can follow it because we are going to start it from the scratch because this videos i'm making it for the absolute beginners to spring mbc okay so you know, before i get started with this particular video and before i'll tell you the requirement that what i'm going to do here in this particular video i will tell you just one thing guys do practice with me okay so in this video i'm going to code a lot of things i don't know how long i'm going to take the session because uh, i have i have a lot of thoughts in my mind right because uh, whenever I, I think about spring data binding, I always think from where I need to start because I want to go step by step. I don't want to confuse you people, right? Uh, so make sure whenever I will start coding, okay? And whenever I'll say, pause this video, take some rest and do practice the same thing. Make sure you are going to do the same thing. You are going to practice the things with me. You are going to code the things with me, okay? So this is the only request from my end. So I hope that you guys are going to be with me till the end of this video and you are going to take uh, necessary breaks whenever you are finding these things that okay it's getting complicated right now let's take a break and let's practice the same thing okay so that you will be comfortable and the next thing will be just like a joke for you right this is this is a very simple thing this is a very simple topic spring data binding and uh, be sure we all are in the same page before we move to the next video and obviously, if you're finding any difficulties, I'm going to help you out in the comment section or you can send me a mail, right? I'm going to help you out. Let's get started. Okay, so right now let's go ahead and let's have a look on the wireframe, right? Because I want you guys to know what we're trying to develop here. So, as I said, we're going to make a love calculator. So you'll have two text boxes, your name and cross name. And obviously you'll have a checkbox here. Okay, so you can, you can check this box if you're agreeing to our terms and condition. Okay, and once you are going to fill in your, your name and the cross name, you're going to hit calculate, right? So this is gonna be uh, move you forward to the result page, right? So you can see this is another page. Okay, so in this particular page, we're going to predict uh, the uh, result uh, just for fun. Okay, so the important thing right here is uh, this page is a little complicated. Uh, I mean, it has a lot of feature. We're not going to build all the features here in this particular video. But in this particular video, our aim and intention is uh, we need to bind the data, right? So see here, we have two pages. This is the page number one. And whenever we hit calculate, this is the page number two. So whatever the data that we are entering in the first page, the same data we need to move to the next page so here you can see jack and rose we have entered in the first page and we need to capture the same data in the next page okay so right now you can ask me a simple question that i will ask what's special here right we have already done the same kind of things in the model video correct but here guys we're going to learn a lot of exciting things we're going to code things out in the modern way right we're going to learn about spring data binding we're going to learn about the query parameter or the query string we are going to learn about the spring mbc form tag we are going to learn about the at request parameter i mean at request param annotation we are also going to learn about at model attribute annotation we are also going to explore that what is a model attribute right which are very fundamental things and they are pretty necessary whenever we are developing a spring mbc application okay so a lot of exciting things in the store hopefully you are excited let's get started and let's start coding This is going to be our home page or the landing page and whenever we're going to fill in all the details and we're going to hit calculate we're going to go to the next page which is this right so two pages page number one page number two so first let's develop this page right uh, let's create a controller that controller will return a page which is going to be this page let's develop this particular page and let's do the data binding okay let's uh, let's let's capture all this data whatever user is entering uh, here in the boxes in, in the text boxes let's capture all those data right so let's do it okay so right okay. now i'm in my sts and this is the spring love calculator application 
and this application we have developed in the last few videos right so we have basically just set up the dispatcher servlet and that's it okay so right now we're going to start doing the actual code here so as you can see right now we have a config folder here in this config folder we have all those dispatcher servlet set up and we have a configuration file and in the controllers we just have a test controller we have created this controller just to test our application so right now let me create a uh, actual controller let me create a controller which is going to help us uh, in our application that we are building right so this application name is uh, love calculator right so i'm going to give a class name as lc app controller and this controller i'm going to place it inside the controllers package okay i'm going to hit finish okay so eclipse has right now created a very simple class for us called lc app controller now to make this a controller i need to annotate this class with add controller annotation and i have to create a method here which is going to handle our incoming request so let me create a method here public uh, string and uh, the, the method that i want to create here that's basically handle a class request so right. what i what i'll do here i write a request uh, mapping over this method and I'll just give the URL pattern as slash right so whenever I'm going to deploy this application in my server as soon as I deploy it the slash request will be fired and this particular method will be executed what I'm going to uh, you know develop right now so let's say public string show home page because I'm going to uh, develop a home page pretty pretty soon and let me say return and let me write here home page let's say home dash page okay pretty simple method okay so right now whenever my show home page method will be called this particular page will be returned so let me copy this name and let me create the uh, jsp page right let me create a jsp page here let me go to src uh, main web app web inf and view and here I'm going to create a new page right now. So let me create a new JSP page. So let me click on other. Let me search for the JSP page or the JSP file. I'm going to double click here. And right now, let me give the pages uh, control V homepage.jsp. Let me do finish. And now Eclipse will create a very uh, simple template for me. Let me minimize this and uh, here in the body let me give a h1 tag here and let me say a love calculator let me align this header here to align to center and there you go let me control s it now let me see everything works fine or not uh, you know by deploying this application into my server and let me see that this home page will be displayed in my browser or not whenever i'm firing where is my lc app controller whenever I'm firing a class request. Uh, so what I'm going to do here right now, I'm going to do a right click, I'll do a run edge. First, I'll just compile my source code just to check everything is working fine. And my build is success because I haven't built this application for a, uh, for last four or five days uh, because I was not recording any videos. So let me see everything is in place. Okay, so let Maven to build all these things and you can see build is success so no problem right now let me deploy this application into the server so so i'll go to run as run on server so i'll do next finish and let me see whether any error is there or things will work fine so right now my application will be deployed uh, to my tomcat right okay so let me wait till the deployment gets completed and initializing the dispatcher servlet and there you go okay it's done okay so right now my project has deployed in tomcat so i was expecting that as there is a slash request is here uh, my lc app controller uh, this particular method should execute and my home page which i have developed just right here should have executed and i would have get love calculator in my screen but i'm getting a 404 not found probably because of my dispatcher servlet setup so let me go to my config file and let me open lc app initializer and as you can see i have given the my dispatcher servlet url pattern as my website.com so what i can do here i can write here 
mywebsite.com slash enter and now there you go so now my home test gets executed and i found uh, this love calculator because of this h1 tag that i have given here okay this is pretty good uh, guys i'll do one thing i'll go to that lc app initializer where i have configured my dispatcher servlet and let me remove this thing right now let me give a url pattern as slash so whatever the request is going to come to my server this particular dispatcher servlet is going to handle that request right so let me do control command s to save and let me close this particular file and let me go here right now and right now if i'll if i'll fire the same url right here it should not work right let me do enter and it's not working right and it's saying okay there is a no mapping exists just like mywebsite.com slash so because i have removed that mywebsite.com from my dispatcher servlet so instead of this right now i do not need to write this mywebsite.com and simply i can say a spring love calculator which is my project name and slash enter and there you go i'm able to access my home page that i have created a few minutes back cool so my uh, controller is in place so let me let me collapse this so i have created this lc app controller right so this controller is working fine and i'm able to view this home page okay so right now we're going to design our home page right so let me first create uh, these two test boxes and this uh, submit button right here and also will create this level this checkbox will bring in letter right so what i'm going to do here right now i'm going to minimize these things i'm going to drag this page just like this and i'm going to open up my browser so that whatever i will design right here i can see whether it is reflecting right here or not so first of all i'll give a valid title here so let me give a title called uh, home page and after that i'm going to start creating my form so what i'm going to do here first i'm going to create a label and in this level i'll say your name okay and uh, i'm going to also create a text box so i'll say input and i'll say type equal to text so this text box is for this level right so i'll say for and i'll say uh, this text box is for your name right so i'll say yn here and in type i'll give a id here and this id will be same as this yn command c command v command s let me refresh this and there you go so right now we can see our label and text box in our screen so whenever you click here your cursor goes there that's because i've given a 4 here and also i've given an id here which matches with the 4 okay so the next thing is i'm going to wrap this up with a p tag so p tag start and p tag end so i'll write plus p and there you go command s and right now i'm gonna i'm gonna copy this and i'm going to do a control v here and i'm going to say here crush name i'll write crush name and uh, the four i'll change it to cn which stands for crush name and id i'll change it to cn okay so let me refresh this and i'll get another uh, you know a level and a text box here whenever i'll select this you know the cursor is moving here which is perfect that's why i have done the four and i have given id to the input there you go so the next thing i need to create a you know submit button so i'll write input here and i'll give type equal to submit and the value i'll give as calculate i'll do control s to save everything refresh this i get a button here right now let's do one thing let's move everything to center so i'll do here uh, div and i'll wrap all these things with a div let me do a cut and let me paste it right here and let me align this div to center let me refresh this there you go okay your name crush name and a calculate button right so now uh, i need to give a you know, form parameter name to my input boxes so i'll give name okay and i'll give as username and the crush name for this text box i'll give another name and i'll write crush name here okay so i'll refresh this this uh, basically will not reflect here so whenever we'll do submit then we can see this username and crush name in the url parameter okay so right now let me refresh this and let me do calculate here but nothing is happening it's not moving to the next page right 
so to do that we need to use the form tag right so let me uh, let me wrap all this thing into a form okay this uh, love calculator this is a header right this header is not required to put it inside a form but this div this form that i have created right this form i need to wrap this with a form tag so let me do it right here i'll say form and uh, here uh, action i'll give let's say this is my home page right so whenever i'll fill in the data and i'll say calculate it is basically go to the next page and i'll call this page as process dash home page okay process home page so let me do a command s right here and i can also give a method to this particular form let me say get request for now so i'll write method equal to get and i'll command s everything i'll refresh this particular form i'll fill in the user your name let's say sheldon and cross name emmy uh, calculate and there you go something happened right this time we hit calculate it's moving to a next page which is called process home page but this url which is getting fired i have not handled that url right that's why i have got i'm getting a 404 error because i'm not handling this url so far and also i have not created the process home page right that page i have not designed so i'm getting a 404 error but there is something interesting here look at here in this url we are also getting the form parameters right this username and the cross name this is our form parameter right for your name i've given the parameter name as username and for cross name i've given the parameter name as cross name so that's what i'm getting username value that i have entered here is seldon cross name the value that i have entered here is emmy right so all those things are attached to my url right now so it's very important to understand guys this url pattern right so this thing we are calling it as a query string okay so what is a query string uh let's have a let's have an analysis but uh, i just want to repeat this step again i'm just putting some value here i'm putting some value here observe the url this is my home page url whenever i'm giving a slash this particular page is getting loaded i'm filling in my details i'm doing calculate it's coming to the process home page and with all the data that i have entered in the last page right now we need to we need to uh, you know store this data we need to handle this data we need to capture this data right in our page right now let me command a command c this url and let me paste it somewhere and let me do a command v here so this is my uh, complete url right so i want you guys to analyze this url right uh, because we as a developer we should understand okay from the url what is happening if we're seeing a url we can understand from that right so first of all let me make it simple for you by explaining all these things that we have right here okay so first of all we have our http let me do a command c here let me do a command v here so what is http http is a protocol so i know most of you already know about it i don't want to explain this and then what is localhost so see uh, if we are developing a website right then we need to you know host that website somewhere somewhere we need to keep that website so that anybody is firing a request our website can handle it so right now we have placed our website inside tomcat right so if you are creating your own website right so we can uh, think about host getter think about godaddy right there they're providing us some hosting platform right we can also host our website in host getter we can also host our website in uh, godaddy right or in your company you will have a server right their own server you can host your website into your own server and that server will have an ip so if you are deploying your website into a remote server this local host instead of local host you are going to you know put some ip number right here but right now i'm deploying my website in my local system so it's local host so i'll do command v so local host is the server so right now my website is running in my local server and now 8080 uh, most of you already know about this 8080 is the port number this is the port number so uh, for tomcat the port number is 8080 uh, for jbus the default port number is 8180 okay just like that okay so the next thing is class spring love calculator this is my project name 
and slash process home page this is my resource name this is my web page name that i'm going to create so this is going to my url called command v here so i can simply say it the uh, address to the uh, resources or to the web resources okay so the next thing here is pretty important so it starts from uh, the question mark is goes till the end so this thing is called a query string okay this is pretty important to understand and that's why i'm actually explaining you all these things these things you already know right so the query string is generated from the user input so think like you have given a very big form to your user your user has fill in all the details he did enter and all the user information we will get as a query string okay and this query string plays a very vital role in real time right we'll get all the information where from the traffic is coming who is the user who is logging in oh, what is the user interest all these things we can get from the query parameter so we need to capture those things right so how to capture we're going to learn next so right now the things that you need to re remember is from the question mark till the end we will say it a query string let me copy this control v so this is a query string cool now if you see this query string right it starts from a uh, question mark this question mark is called as a identifier i think people call it identifier identifier because uh, through the question mark we are only identifying right from where our query parameter starts right so question mark is called as a identifier now if you see here in this query string we have name value pair so let's say we have username here this is our form parameter name if you go back you can see for this text box you have given the parameter name as username right so whatever the information goes into the username text box you can capture this by using this query parameter so we can say here we have multiple query parameters right this is a query parameter this is a query parameter crush name so query parameter basically built with a key value pair right so username is the key seldon is the value crush name is the key Amy is the value right so i can say i can copy this and i can write here command v and i can say this this is a query parameter and basically you can see the query parameters are separated by equal to symbol so the equal to here called as a separator right you don't need to remember all these things just understand right so this is a separator question mark is a identifier this is a key value pair we call this key value pair as query parameter very simple i don't want to repeat this thing okay so the next thing here is the uh, this end symbol right so you can see this end symbol is doing what you may have 20 or 30 query parameters right all these query parameters are connected by the end symbol here so the end is basically the connector uh, to the query parameters right so multiple query parameters can be connected with the end symbol here so i can do a copy here okay i don't have okay let me do i have a, another row here let me write here this is a connector okay so using the end we can connect multiple query parameters right now i think you can pretty easily understand a url right so let me go back to the sts okay so before we go ahead i'll just show you one more thing okay what if i'll write sheldon in the your name text box i'll write sheldon space then cooper okay now i'll do calculate see the url right now okay let me stop my server for now okay so now if we'll see the url if you see the username here see the pattern sheldon plus cooper now the crush name is emmy so what do you understand from here so if i give a space right in between two words then it will be connected with a plus symbol okay so like this there are multiple operators which are used in the url right so we will be discovering all of them while we are doing coding but right now this is pretty basic and i think we all are in the same page right so if we see a url we can understand okay these are the query parameters we need to capture these are the query parameters we need to capture and what is the end what is the question mark here we should be able to understand this right all good okay 
pretty simple right <laughs> okay so the next thing let me go back right now okay so my uh, my page looks good here so let me just give a hr hr tag right here so that i will get a line after my love calculator i'll give a hr dash uh, sorry hr tag right here so let me refresh this okay i have stopped my server right so let me turn on my server let me go to my server tab let me start my server and after that uh, if all is good then i can go to the next thing which is where i'm going to develop the next page the process home page right so the result page actually i am going to develop and i'm going to capture all my query parameters and i'm going to show all those query parameters whatever i captured in the result page right so let my server get started and it's done and if i'm going to refresh this right now okay i get a uh, you know line here right this looks good for now so the next thing is uh, as i said i'm going to enter something here i'm going to enter something here i do calculate and when i do calculate this url is getting fired right process home page let me copy this and let me handle this url this url is getting fired because of this form action right so now let me develop a new uh, let me go to my lc app controller okay let me go here let me close the test controller let me minimize this so here uh, i am basically in my lc app controller right now i'm basically create a new method and let me say public string uh, so uh, result page okay and let me map this method to a url called request mapping and let me write here this one right process home page here control command v process home page and let's say uh, whenever uh, this method will be executed we are going to show the user a simple result page okay let me stop my server otherwise it, it is going to keep reloading i'll say uh, result dash page command s now let me copy this name result page and let me start creating a result page here let me copy this okay now let me close all these things here let me close all the tabs so that you guys won't be confused and let me go to the view let me do right click new other and let me create a uh, another jsp file and in this jsp file I'm going to give the file name as command V result page JSP. I do finish. Okay, I'll get a simple JSP page and I'll write here. Uh, let me give a H1 tag here and let me say love calculator because this is my application name. Let me again align this to center. Align center. Okay, there you go. So the next thing is I'm going to give a HR here and uh, for now, let me say in the P tag. Uh, so I am getting my result page. So let me see whether my things are working or not. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my server again and let me wait till my server gets started. Okay, so my server has started here. So let me go to uh, my STS. Let me click on this browser icon. Let, let me do command V here, which paste my URL. I'll come to my home page. I'll give a username, let's say Sheldon, first name as Emmy, and calculate. Boom. So I'm getting my result page. <laughs> so cool. So in my love calculator, uh, um, in my LC app controller, first this method get called. We show my home page and once I fill in all the details, I do enter. Now process home page URL gets fired and this particular methods get executed and result page we are getting right here. Okay, things are good, right? Things are good, right? Okay, so before I go ahead, I want to show you something some, something really interesting. You can use this thing you know, pretty much uh, uh, you know, later whenever we're going to develop a lot of complex thing. And also 
whenever you will be a full stack java developer or whenever you will be a spring developer right you, whenever you will be doing your real time job you can use this thing so let me copy this url let me go to my google chrome let me paste this url let me do enter okay. so before i do enter right i'll show you one thing i will open the developer tab here i'm in the developer tools here so we're going to use this tool okay we're going to track something here uh, what, what kind of request we are getting is a get request or a post request what kind of parameters we are getting form parameters we can all these things we can track right here in the network tab right so what i can do here let me do a command v and let me hit enter so okay so this is my application so let me uh, resize this thing a little okay so you can see here the url which is getting fired is right here so whenever you are just browsing through your application you can know what are the urls which is getting fired and we can use this url letter you know to debug our application right i'll just tell you all those things but for now just think like okay whenever i hit this url i am seeing here this url get fired and the status is 200 so that's okay so right now let me fill in all this uh, text boxes let me say sheldon and uh, let me say emmy and let me do calculate and there you go as soon as i have done calculate you can see the url which is getting fired right now is process dash home page right and these are the parameters if i click here in this url now you can see i'll get a lot of information right here so you can see the query parameters right here username is the query parameter the value is sheldon this is what i have entered crush name is my query parameter m is what i have entered in the text box right so this is how i can track my query parameters by using the google developer tab right make sure you are in the network section and whenever you are hitting a url uh, you will get your url right here and all your url related information right here you can see this is the get request uh, the status code is 200 okay right now you might be thinking okay what is the need of this play with this okay you will understand what is the need of this as we go ahead with this course and when we'll be doing a lot of complex thing this thing will help you a lot to find out the things debug the things and play with all these things things are pretty simple if we really know how to use all these things okay that's cool so let me close this so much story let me go back to my sts right here okay things are done so right now we have successfully developed two pages first page calculate this is the second page right now the thing that i'm going to do here whenever i am filling in all these details and i'm doing calculate here I have my query parameters and from my query parameters, I'm going to capture this value and I'm going to show this value here in this page, in the second page, right? Cool. So how I'm going to uh, capture all this value, okay? So uh, again, see here, I'm filling in the value in the first page. So in the first page, I'm not doing anything. I'm just filling in the value. So whenever I do calculate, when the second controller method is getting called that I have developed a few minutes back, at that time only i have to capture all this thing and i have to make these things available here in this particular page simple right so let me do that so let me go to my lc app controller so here in the process home page i'm going to use a very special annotation here and the annotation name is at request param at request param yeah there you go this annotation and uh, I'm going to, this annotation is going to help us to bind, okay, the result that we're getting in the URL header, right? For the username, we're getting a value called Sheldon. For cross name, we're getting a value called Emmy, right? This Sheldon and Emmy, this parameters value, I'm going to bind it to a string, okay? I'm going to capture this value. So to capture this, I'm going to use this uh, at request param annotation. I'm going to write here a string because this is going to be a string. And what is my uh, parameter name? Let me go to my, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me open this home page. Okay. Let me minimize this. Let me drag my home page just like this. Okay. So the parameter name for username is username, right? Let me command C this. Let me do a command V here. Okay. So now uh, this username will have the value, whatever the username will be entered. You see here. So whenever I'm entering uh, the username value right here, calculate this username is Sheldon, right? This value I wanted to capture and the parameter name is username. 
the parameter name actually I am copying this and I am pasting it right here. Okay, so the value will be automatically binded with this particular uh, variable and then I can similarly write a, another request param here. We do a comma uh, at request param, a request param and I will write crush name. I can simply control C this and control V it right here. So right now uh, my username and cross name. Okay, this is a string value. I'm sorry. Let me write string here. Okay, and uh, there you go. Cool. So right now, let me test that this particular variables is actually binded with my uh, values that I'm entering in my web page or not, right? So to test that, I'm going to simply write to sysout right here, sysout, and I'll write uh, username is I'll do plus username, uh, which is this one. And then similarly, I'm going to copy this line, command C to copy and command B to paste. And I'm going to say crush name is, and I'm going to copy this variable name and I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to command S it. Let me print it to the console first. If I'm able to capture these values and if I'm able to print it into the console, there is no big deal to print it into the web page, right? So let, let me see if these things are working fine or not right now. So let me do again, uh, deploy this application into my server. Let me do it quickly. Cool, so my server has started right now. Okay, so let me write the name here. Let me do Sheldon, Emmy, and calculate. Let's look at the console here. Your username is Sheldon and the cross name is Emmy. So now this is pretty much clear that using the at request param annotation, we can actually capture or we can actually bind our form parameters to the variables that we're creating right here, right? So whenever you're doing this thing, one thing you keep in mind, this thing, these parameter names should match with the uh, your input parameters name just like username and cross name if these things are not matching you will be getting an exception okay so for an example uh, i'll just show you this right here if i'll go to my lc app controller let's say i'll give here username one crush name one i'll change it to username one crush name one do command dash i've changed the variable name okay which is which is not matching with the input parameter name that I'm getting in the URL. Now see what is going to happen. Uh, okay, it's reloaded fine. Let me go to my browser. Let me go back. Let me do refresh. Now let me hit Sheldon and Emmy here and calculate and there you go. So we're getting a warning here, right? What is the warning says? The warning says that required string parameter username one is not present, right? So this is the username but I have here used the username one, which is not exactly matching with the username. Okay. So you can happily do things just like this, but if you are giving a different uh, variable name, uh, which is not matching with the input parameter name. So what you can do, you can do, you can you know, put a bracket here. You can give the actual parameter name just right here. So the actual parameter name for me is username and for crush, let me break this statement here. And for the crush, I can give here uh, the actual uh, crush, uh, crush input parameter name, right? So I can write crush name, right? Now it matches with the URL parameters name, right? So now let me wait till my server gets reloaded and I'll test this application again. Now I can see that even though we have a different variable name that uh, now is completed, right? Even though right now we have a different variable name right here, but as we are providing our actual parameter name right here inside this parenthesis, now things should work fine. So let me go here. So it's giving a bad request right here previously, right? So let me go back. So let me rephrase this particular page and let me do again Sheldon and any. Okay, calculate. Okay, still we are getting something nasty here. Required cross name is not present. Okay, did I spell it wrong? So let me go to the controller cross name uh, Crush name crush name 
crush name. Let me copy this. Let me go here. Let me control V it here. Okay, I have a typo there, no problem. So right now let my server reload this thing this. Okay, so it's completed. Now let me go to the uh, browser here. Let me do a refresh. And let me do Sheldon and Penny. Okay, let me do calculate. And there you go. Now it's binding fine. Even though we have, uh, let me go, go here. Let, even though we have a different variable name, as you are specifying the actual parameter name right here inside the request param parenthesis, things are working good and our things are getting binded. And also we are able to print these things to our console. Cool. So right now, as we are able to capture all this value from the parameter, from the URL parameter, our job is right now the binding is happening, right? We're able to bind uh, those uh, URL parameter values with the string variable that we have declared here, right? So right now our job is we need to capture this value. We're already capturing here. We're just trying to log it into the console, but the captured value should be printed in the result page. So what I mean by here is that, so as you can see, whenever we're entering these values, we're doing calculate, right? So here, in this page, in this result page right now, these values we need to, not only we need to capture those values, also we need to display those values here in this particular page. So right now, uh, the thing is, we need to transfer the value that we have captured, we need to send this value to the result page. If I do command shift R, this is the result page, if I do double click, in this page, Okay, we need to make this value available. So now the question is how to send uh, the data, this data from the controller to the command shift R to the view, to this view. So how to do that? I know you guys already know about it. Okay, we can do that by using a model. So what to wait for? Let's create a model object, right? So inside this method, so result page, so we have to show the value right here in this particular page. This page is handled by this particular controller method. So in this method, uh, actually we are calling the result page, which is this page. So right now we need to do what? We need to send this value to, to that page by using a model. Model, and I write model. And there you go. Okay, so what is this model? This model is the interface, right? This is the interface reference. Now, who is going, going to give the implementation for this interface? Spring framework. I'm going to set the value with this model reference. The object will be created whenever I'm deploying this application and Spring framework will give the implementation for this model interface. So my job is not to think much about it. I've just created the model reference here and to this model object or the reference, whatever you say this, I'm going to do what model dot add attribute. I'm going to use this method. First attribute name. Let me say attribute name is username. And the attribute value is this value username one, which is containing the username value. Let me do a semicolon. And again, model dot add attribute. Let me use this method. And here attribute name, I'm going to give as crush name and the attribute value is crush name one. Let me command say this. Let me command V this and there you go. So using the attribute name, actually I, I can access these variables. Okay. And these variables are actually containing the data here. Okay. This value, this variable is containing the data, which is getting captured from the username parameter. And this variable contains the data, which is getting captured from the crush name parameter from the URL. Okay, that's good. So I have added everything to the model. So let me go to resolve page. Uh, let me uh, minimize this. Let me go to the resolve page. To go to the resolve page, you can again do command shift R to open this page. And this is my resolve page. Let me do like this. Okay, this is my controller. This is my view. So in my view here, 
I am going to remove this P tag from here right now. Let, let me have the P tag. Let me remove the content from here. And inside the P tag, I am going to print the value for username. Uh, what I have given the name, it should be N-A-M-A. -A. Okay, let me copy this. Okay, and let me paste it right here. This is my username. Let me say user user name is username and let me copy it again command C and paste it again right here command V and let me format this command shift F and there you go command S and this one crush name let me copy this and paste this variable here so this crush name will be actually my crush name one and this crush name one is actually the value which has been captured from here right simple so now uh, things are all set let me see whether i can see uh, my username and cross name value in my server or not so let me again start my server i will not bore you guys so let me save everything so what i can do here i can wait till my server gets started and then i'll resume this video okay cool so right now my server is started let me refresh my home page right now let me uh, give my username, which is let's say Sheldon, and cross name, let me give Penny this time, okay? Penny is my favorite. <laughs> so I can do calculate, and uh, here is saying Sheldon and Penny. So uh, the, this is why, this is because I have did a system.out.println inside my controller. Okay, and there I go. Username is Penny, uh, sorry, username is Sheldon, and uh, username is Penny, not username. Uh, this is my uh, cross name. Right, so I'll write crush name is Penny. Command S. Let me refresh this. Okay, worked good. Okay, username is Sheldon. Crush name is Penny, and this is happening. Why? Because we have used here the model object. Right, we have used the model object right here. If I'm going to close this, I, if I if I'm going to you know zoom it. Okay, using the model object. Actually, I'm transferring these values to the next page okay but right now guys this is gonna be a very challenging situation the things are working fine right now but imagine you have a very big form okay uh, think like you have 100 text boxes or you if you have 50 text boxes then is it possible you are going to use 50 time request param for each parameter you have to write request param you have to actually declare 50 string or just like this and you have to bind those values with your URL parameters value by using the at request param. I don't think it's a good approach. Then you have to write your method declaration will be just like 100 lines, right? That won't make sense. So what we can do here? Uh, so this is just getting bigger and bigger our method parameter. We don't need to do coding just like this. So the solution here is the Spring framework provides a very, uh, you know, very standard way to do data binding. Okay, so now let's see here, if we're not going to use the request param, as I said, okay, then how we are going to do a proper spring bind binding without writing a lot of code, without writing a lot of at request param, and without declaring a lot of string variables, right? Uh, that is bad okay so now let's say i have a form right let's say i have this form i have username and cross name there are two text boxes right so what i will do i will create a pojo okay or i'll create a dto so dto means a data transfer object right we can we can create a dto we can create a class object and inside that object we are going to set all our data and we are going to process that object or layer by layer layer by layer so that DTO means it is going to consist data and a data transfer object, right? The name says everything. Using that object, we are going to transfer data, right? So imagine right now, we are going to create a simple POJO or we are going to create a simple DTO, just like here in the screen. Let's say user information DTO, user info DTO. Uh, because here, if you see in this form, username and cross name is basically the user information. So the class name I've given here, user info DTO. So basically what we mean by that, we need to observe our form for for an example here in our form we have two text boxes we have two form fields so i have created similar two variables inside a class 
and I, here I have created DTO class, right? And I have created necessary getters and setter for them. So right now, let's say I'm entering a username and trust name right here. So the intention here is the spring framework will automatically bind these values, the username value ME to this particular username and the cross name Sheldon to this particular variable cross name. So spring framework is automatically going to bind. Okay. If I'm going to create a class, if I'm going to define two variables, spring says, Hey, just give me that class name where you want to bind your data, right? Your form data. So the spring framework will automatically bind your form data with your class variables. Okay. Just like a magic. Okay. So you don't need to write 50, uh, you know, uh, request param. So just create variables. Okay. Inside your class. And those variables will, you know, bind it automatically with your form data and it, it is going to be magically done by Spring. Okay. So to make sure, to make this happen, you have to make sure if you see this thing right here. Now this is the backend code of this particular form. So this username and this cross name, okay, this should be matched with this username and this cross name. So you have to make sure if you want Spring to bind your form data with the DTO object, if you want to make it happen automatically, then the form parameter name, okay, username and cross name, that should match with your variable names inside that particular class. Otherwise, the data binding will not happen. Okay, let's test this out. So now let me go to STS and all this theory we're going to experience by doing it practical. Okay, let me let me go to my STS right now. Okay, so right now I'm in my STS. So the first thing is that I'm going to let me again close this, close this, close this because I don't want to confuse people by opening a lot of files here in my tabs. So the thing that I'm going to do here is right now I'm going to create a class. What type of class? I'm going to create a DTO. So uh, for DTO, I'm going to define a standard package here. So the package name I'm going to give as com.seleniumexpress.lc.api. Okay. And I'll do finish inside the API package. I'm going to create a class and this class will be my user info DTO data transfer object. So uh, this DTO is going to help me to transfer the data. Okay, I'm going to see how. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to I'm going to hit finish right here. Okay, so this is my class. In this class, I don't have to do anything fancy. Let me minimize it first, and I'll do what? I'll define two variables: private string uh, username and private string crush name. Okay, there you go. Uh, now all these variables are private so we cannot access it outside from the class so we need to create getters and setters for this so i'll go to source generate getters and setters select all okay and there you go also let me create a two string in order to see the value of username and trust name so i'll also go to source i can create a two string and i can do okay that's good now my two string method is here okay so i have not written any line of code here uh, eclipse has done the coding for me so right now the thing that i have said to you i need to make sure if i open my home page right i did a command shift r so that i'll get this box so i'll open up my home page just jsp let me double click here this is my home page let me drag this in just like this come on man home page okay just like this so I need to make sure only one thing for your name, right? I've given this form parameter name as username. This should match with this. So to, because I don't trust my spelling, I'll do command C here, command V here. Okay. And cross name, command C here and command this command V here. Okay. Cross name, what I've given cross, let me write cross name okay and the getter and setter name also i need to change command c command v here the spelling is killing me man 
and here also is cross name okay things are looking good right now let me save this particular program and somewhere else okay in the two string method also i need to write cross name okay good so right now uh, let me do one thing let me uh, close this close this uh, close this i have closed everything right now open the controller in the controller right now we are going to do some magic okay so the first magic is i'm going to minimize this <laughs> the next thing is i'm going to zoom it now we'll do the magic so uh, right now all this request param right we don't need it let me delete it instead of this what i'm going to do here i'll just create the object for that particular class user info dto user info dto cool okay for now uh, let me comment this sorry for now let me comment okay it skips reloading man let me stop this okay let me comment this model thing let me comment this model thing command s let me first see the data binding is happening perfectly or not okay now username one and crush name one is not there so what i'm going to do here uh, i have this object right so the intention here is the spring is going to create i'm not creating the object here right spring is going to create the object for the user info dto and then spring is going to map all the url parameter to the if i do command click here to all these values right username cross name all these spring variables that we have spring is going to automatically inject the value for username and cross name by fetching it from the url okay so to see the username value we can use get get username to see the cross name value we can see the get cross name okay so let me come here let me use the user this particular reference user info dto let me do command c here and let me do command v here and do get username and let me say user info dto get cross name okay let me see the values are getting binded automatically to this object or not because i am not doing anything right here i have just created a class that's it and i have just make sure that my form parameters and the, my class uh, properties names are matching that's it now i'm just trying to fetch the value from this object uh, the property value of this particular object i'm trying to fetch and i'm trying to log it to my console that's it so let me do command s uh, let me start my server and let's see if any magic is happening okay let me start my server and let me wait till my server starts come on man do it faster do it faster I have to say a lot of things to you. Now, how many of you are feeling bored? I don't think you guys are feeling bored. Come on, man. We're learning something new, right? I hope somebody would have teach me all these things whenever I have started my career, right? <laughs> Just joking. No, it was really a very struggling time to understand all these things. Okay, my, my server has started. Okay, cool. So right now, I will uh, go to uh, let let me go to my uh, Google Chrome here. I'll test from here. Let me do refresh the page. Okay, I'll get it. Now I will type in Sheldon. Oops, Sheldon. Crush name Amy. Calculate. Okay, I'm not getting anything here in this page. That's cool because I have commented out my. Uh, okay, here I'm getting Sheldon already. So the binding is happening cross name i'm getting now what is the problem okay okay two things okay don't be confused i'm not getting here anything right the sheldon and me whatever the value that i have entered here i'm not getting here in this particular page that's because i have commented out the model attribute okay so the my model is not going to the view so my view is not accessing the data that's okay but here i'm trying to get the username and the cross name but I'm not sure why the cross name is coming now. Already you can see for the username, I'm getting Sheldon. That's good. That means my data binding is happening for username. But for the cross name, what went wrong? Why saying no? So let me debug it. So let me go to user info DTO. Cross name here. Let me copy this. 
Uh, I have already made sure that things are good, right? Here inside the crush name, control V. Things are good here. So what went wrong? Um, okay. So let me do command S. Now let me, oh, I remember it. See the spelling of this getter method? <laughs> and, the, and the setter method, C-U-R, right? It is C-R-U right here. And the spelling of this is C-U-R. See how the problem is happening? Why I'm getting null here? That's because, that's because what is happening whenever uh, Spring is creating the object of this user info DTO, right? And Spring is internally using the setter method, okay, to inject the value for, inject the value for this variable. But the setter method itself, the spelling is wrong, right? So whenever, if I, if I go to, go to my uh, URL, you can see, Spring is trying to read uh, the cross name from the URL. So the spelling of cross name is cross name. So it comes to my controller. If I if I go to my controller, in my controller here, inside the user info DTO, it is trying to look for a setter method called set cross name. But I am a fool. What I did here, I have just given the wrong name to this cross name setter method. <laughs> so what I can do now, I can completely delete this set crush name and I also want to delete that uh, get crush name. Okay, let me do command S, let me regenerate it. So I'll go to source, then generate getters and setters, crush name and okay. Okay, so now I have a crush name, right? This two string method also let me delete it because I don't trust it right now because of the spelling mistake. Let me generate the two string method again. Hit OK. So I have a two string method here. Let me cut it and let me put it right here. Command S to save. Okay. Now let me uh, do one thing. Let me start my server and let's see what is going to happen. Okay. My server has started here. I'll do one thing. Uh, okay. Here I have a compilation error. Okay. Get cross name. Let me rewrite this because the naming convention was not right, right? Get cross name, command S to save. I'll wait till my server will reload the changes. Okay, initializing the dispatcher, reloading completed. Okay, so right now, if I'll go to my uh, browser here, let me go back. Let me refresh the page. I'll give Sheldon, one, two, three. Amy, one, two, three. Calculate. Okay, this space, I don't care because I have not done the coding for this. But here you go. Sheldon 1, 2, 3. ME 1, 2, 3. Okay, so are you seeing what is happening internally? So Spring is actually binding the data for us. So Spring is saying, okay, in this user info DTO, whatever the property that we have, right? All this property, okay, it is binding the data by capturing those data from the URL which is this. So it's capturing the data from here, username and crush name. And it is also making sure, Spring is making sure right now, those data is binding to these variables, okay? So we don't need to use at request param. We can just simply create the object for this, okay? So this object Spring is creating, okay? I'm not creating user info DTO, user info DTO equal to new user info DTO. So if you're getting confused, you can do one thing. You can go to user info DTO and here, you can actually create a constructor, public user info DTO, user info DTO. And I can create a default constructor here just to make sure this constructor is getting called and Spring is creating the object for this because I'm not creating it. So I'll just write this out here, this out. And let's say user info DTO constructor called. Okay, uh, dot dot command S to save. Let me see my changes are getting reloaded. Okay, reloaded, destroying, initializing. Okay, completed. So now if I if I if I if I if I go here, let me go back, let me refresh this thing, let me do give something here, let me give something here. I'll do calculate. Okay, now see the console. User info DTO constructor is getting called. That means that means if I come to my controller. First, Spring is creating the object of user info DTO. This particular lines confirms that, 
right? Because my constructor is getting called. Spring is calling that constructor to create the object. And then Spring is calling the setter method of username and crush name. Why? Because look at the URL here, username and crush name. So it is calling set username, it is passing this value, it is calling set crush name and it is passing this value. And it is making sure all those values are set with this particular properties. And after that, go back. After that, my data binding is done. Right now, my work is I'm going to send this data, send this object to my you know, view, which is result page. So I'll do what? I'll remove one model attribute from here. I'll uncomment this and I'll say user info uh, and I'll copy this uh, reference because here what all the values are already I'm going to paste it here so user info DTO object will be available in my uh, result page so I'll go this is the reference I'm going to copy this reference I'm going to go to my result page command set R uh, and result page and here I'll say let me do command V here user info dot what is my variable name uh, my variable name user info data variable name is username let me copy this let me paste it here and similarly user info command c command v and what is my variable name uh, my variable name is user info data variable name is cross name command c command v here and there you go command s to save so right now spring will internally call the getter method get username get cross name over this user info this user info is actually if i go to my controller this user info is user info dto so the user info dto getter method of username and cross name will be called and the value will be available just right here okay because we are already sending the value right spring is internally going to call the getter method of this dto to get those value which is already set to my dto's variables so right now I'm going to start my server and let's see everything is working fine or not. And in my result page, I'm getting the data or not, right? So let me uh, restart my server. I'm just stopping my server and restarting it. Doesn't like it. Because if I'm not stopping it, it is trying to reload it automatically. And uh, you know, I cannot show you all these things in one screen while recording, right? Start it. Let me go to here. Let me do refresh. Uh, let me say here Abhilash and crush name. Uh, okay, crush name is um, Java. <laughs> Calculate. Come on, man. Yeah, there you go. Username is Abhilash, crush name is Java. Okay, pause. Pause right now. Pause this video and do practice. Practice this much, then we'll go forward. Okay, I'm also going to take a break right now. You also take a break. Practice this much and Come back to this video, okay? Bye-bye for now.
Okay, so right now we're going to learn something called a model attribute. So what is a model attribute? So I can say is the latest way, it's a modern way to bind data in Spring. So guys, when I said data binding, you have to understand like this, right? Uh, we should able to read the data from the property. Okay. Binding means what? We have to read, we have to write. Okay, for an example, this user in 4DTO, this is the DTO that I have created. Right now, what I did in the last session, I'm trying to face the data from my URL and I'm trying to write the data to this username and the cross name, isn't it? So what about there is some default value, default username value, default cross value. Let's say the default username is user name demo and the default cross name is, let's say equal to cross name demo, right? So let's say there are some values which is uh, attached with this particular username and cross name. So we have to make sure whenever we are displaying our home page, right? This data should be loaded to the respective property. And after that, user can delete this thing and he can enter something else and he can do calculate. So what I mean by that is, let me go to my Google Chrome. So what I mean by that, whenever I'm loading this page, right? So here I want to load the default data. I want some data for your name. I want some data from cross name this data should come from my property okay what property if i'll go back to my sts this is user info data right from this property let's say i have given some default value to these properties now i want this property right here whenever i'm loading this page okay and after that i can give some value right here let's say sheldon and amy again and if i do calculate now i'm sure that it is getting retained to these properties so if I'll go here, now it is getting retained to this property, that's fine. But I should also be able to read these default values whenever I'm loading my page, right? So if you see the controller here, right? If I'll go to my LC app controller, just listen to me, right? If you're not even getting me, listen to me because I'm damn sure you'll be getting it by the end of this video. So here, line number 13 to line number 17, what we're doing? We are showing the home page, okay? So here we should read those default value, okay? Before showing the home page, okay? Before showing this page, if I do refresh, I should show the default value, okay? Just right here. And whenever I'll go to the next controller method, so if you see here, as I said, here user info DTO, user info DTO, this is basically Spring MVC is creating our DTO object and Spring MVC is setting the value by fetching it from the URL, setting the parameter value by fetching it from the URL. But okay, right now here we are actually writing it. Here we are actually writing the value to the uh, to the property by fetching from the URL. Okay, that's good. But here, what I want to do, so here actually I'm showing the home page, right? Show home page. This method is calling the home page. Then my home page is getting loaded. This page is getting loaded, right? So while this page is getting loaded, I want to read, okay, the default properties or existing property by fetching it from the DTO, okay? So here we have to do something so that we'll be also read the existing value right here, okay? So, so read and write. Combiningly, we are saying it a data binding, okay? Data binding means it should be both way, right? You should be able to read from the property. You should be able to write to the property, okay? That's good. Uh, so right now, I'm going to show you some you know, animation right here so that your confusion will be clear. And after that, things should be simple and we'll be just start coding, okay? So right now, I'm going to walk you through a presentation again. So let me open my keynote. So well, first of all, guys, I'll introduce something called Spring MVC form tag. So guys, right now we are using uh, the normal HTML tags, right? Just like to building a form, 
we are using some tags like form, input type equal to text, input type equal to password, or uh, input type equal to checkbox, input type equal to radio button. Okay, so all these tags are HTML tags, right? But Spring MVC here is, has provided us something really amazing tags, and those tags are going to help us to do the data binding. Okay, so just have a look right here. These are some very popular Spring MVC tag. Okay, so let's say don't 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 think so much about it. This is very very simple. Think like if you are you know building a form, right? So what we are writing form uh, action equal to something method equal to getter post, right? But right now we'll not write form. We'll be a little smarter <laughs> and we'll write form colon form. Okay. Let's say right now to create a text box or to create a text field, we, we are writing a input type equal to text. But right now, as input is a part of a form, we'll write form colon input. Let's say we want to create a radio button. We will write form colon radio button. Okay. This radio button is basically going to generate a radio button for us. This form input is going to basically generate the text field for us. Okay. Like that select select we use for the drop downs right instead of select we will write form colon select right this is actually going to generate the drop down list for us and similarly to to write a password we will not write input type equal to password rather we are going to write form colon password like that for text area we are going to write form colon text area okay so this is very very simple thing you know, instead of writing input we are going to write form colon input okay in our case cool so basically these are called spring mvc form tags right so don't worry much about it right now we are going to use it in our course we are going to use it in our project right now then you will try to get some hands on and you will be pretty much comfortable about it now let's start using spring mvc form tag and let's see what the heck is actually spring mvc form tag okay so first of all now let me go to my LC app controller. So here my goal is whenever I'm loading the home page here. So this show home page method whenever this particular method gets called. Whenever we'll have a slash request, this particular method will be called. And then the home page, if I do command shift R, uh, the, then the home page is actually getting displayed, right? So here I want to make sure that I'll be using the Spring MVC form tag so that those tags are going to help me to retrieve any default value if it is attached to my property for an example uh, in the user info detail right now i have two default properties right here right username demo let me let me say it uh, mr x and crush uh, msy oh, sorry not ms ms y <laughs> okay so right now i'll make sure that these things are going to be available whenever we are actually uh, loading the home page so to do that i'm going to use the i'm going to use the spring mvc form tag here inside the home page dot jsp because the spring mvc form tag is going to help us for the data binding okay so before we use the spring mvc form tag let's do some uh, very common thing right so right now here inside the show home page method first of all let me create okay so first of all here let me create a user information uh, dto object okay so i'll say user info dto user info equal to new user info dto okay so whenever we create the object of a class what happens it copies all the non static variable which is there inside the class core java concept if I'm going to create the object for the user info DTO, whenever the objects get created, uh, we'll have a copy of this particular non-static variable. So the username is already initialized to Mr. X and cross name as Miss Y. So uh, what I'm going to do here, so the username, what I can do here right now, I'm going to send this object. This object has two properties and all those two properties has some default value. So I'm going to create a model object here so model model and i'm going to do what model and i'm going to send 
add attribute and I'll say uh, user info and I'm going to send this particular object to my home page right so this particular object has two different properties as I said and all those two properties has some default value okay so I want to access this value inside the home page whenever it gets loaded so let me do command shift r let me go into this particular page and right now here instead of this form tag what I'm going to do I'm going to use a form colon form tag first of all okay so here I can do what form colon control space now nothing is coming so where is that form colon form tag okay so the reason why we want to use the form colon form tag here because that tag is belongs to spring MVC and actually the form colon form tag is going to help us to use the model attribute so first of all my intention here is to get the form colon form tag and to use the form colon form tag right here I have to add the tag lib just right here so what I'll do I don't remember it so I am going to uh, you know I write spring mbc form tag I'll go to internet I'll copy the tag lib somewhere okay here so this is the thing that I want to copy so I'll do copy here and I'll go back and here actually I'm going to paste it I'll do command v to paste so this particular line is right now going to make sure that I can use the spring mbc form tag so make sure that you are going to add this tag lib right here exactly as mine okay in order to activate the form tag right it's http colon double slash www.springframework.org slash tags slash form and the prefix should be form i actually sometimes forget this thing so i prefer to copy paste from the internet so now i'll do form colon control space and form colon form is right here and there you go i can i can copy this and paste it right here so it starts right here and it ends right here okay so right now as i'm using the form colon form tag right here i'll be getting a attribute here called model attribute and this model attribute is what this model attribute is i'll go to my controller and this user info that i have given right i can command c this I can also give a semicolon here so I am creating the user info object here I'm sending this user info through the model to my home page so I'm going to copy this I'm going to go to my home page again and here inside the model attribute I'm going to paste it and I'm going to do command s okay so now this particular form is binded with this user info so from the user info right now we are going to fetch the property right so in order to fetch property the formula is same okay so in order to fetch the value from the property again we need to use the form tag right so instead of normal input here in the line number 21 what I'm going to do here I'm going to say form colon input so form color input is a spring MVC tag and here instead of name I'm going to use something called path okay so I'm going to change all the name to path. So this path is right now going to help us to bind the property. So whatever the username value I'm getting from user info object, that particular value will be binded with username. So you have to make sure one thing, this username should match with your user info DTO username. So you can just simply copy this and paste it right here inside the path okay so just to make you understand again right what is this user info this user info belongs to this user info belongs to this particular user info variable which is belongs to the user info dto class right so we are actually creating the object of user info dto and again we are sending that user info dto to our home page through a model and in our home page we are trying to access the default value from the user info a variable so right now in my input tag which is basically 
this input tag if here i want to populate the default value what i am going to do i'm going to make sure the path name here should basically matches with the exactly the variable name that we have inside our user info detail clear okay so the next thing is pretty simple the same thing i can do i can change this input for cross name to form colon input again and right now here instead of name i'm going to say path and i'll do a command s to save it right so okay i have a typo here so it should be form colon input command s to save and okay so right now let's run our application and right now let's see whether i'm able to fetch the default value what i have set right here in the line number five and six so i'm going to deploy my application again i'll do right click run edge and run on server okay so there you go my server has started now if i'll go to my home page here you can see something really interesting right we're able to fetch our mr x and miss y which is the default property whatever i have set right here inside our user info detail so if i'll go to my home page right now let me uh, drag in my console and all these things to the down page to here so that it won't disturb me right here and right now let me change the default value to let's say sheldon and penny and i'll do calculate again and there you go sheldon and penny just right here that's good so right now i'm going to teach you something really exciting now you actually don't need to you know write this much amount of code okay in order to get the things done that is a very simple way guys I, i'm going to tell you that so let me uh, remove this uh, sysouts right from here and uh, this is basically the uh, things that we are doing in both of the methods right the actual thing that we are doing so guys if you right now see here okay from the line number 13 to line number 22 here what we are basically doing we are creating a model object we are creating an object for our user info dto then we are passing the user info dto to our model attribute and we are giving a name to our attribute called user info here also same thing right we are creating the user info dto object we are only defining it actually spring is behind the scene creating the object of this particular dto okay and then we are trying to add the user info dto to our model attribute and we are giving it a name called user info okay so basically guys these things right we are creating our dto object we are creating a model object we are setting the dto object to our model then sending it to the page this much thing uh, we can do it in a very simple step so i'm going to rewrite this thing these two lines and this line in one line see how i'm going to do it so guys instead of this model and model i'm going to remove this model and model from here and instead of this i'm going to use something here called at model attribute this is going to be same as model okay right now the model attribute name here i'm giving as user info i'm going to copy this and inside the model attribute parenthesis i'll define the attribute name command v okay so this thing is done i'm going to remove it now next thing is i'm i'm trying to create the user info dto object so here i'll just directly write user info dto and user info i can write also user info dto if i'm getting confused there you go i can also remove this okay so i have just removed three lines of code if you're getting confused again reverse for two minutes and start watching what i did okay i'll do command s again to save now same thing i'll do here also here also i'm trying to create the user info dto object i'm also creating the model object then actually i'm setting the user info dto to my model attribute so first i can do what i can remove all these things so instead of this i'll directly write at model attribute at model attribute and inside the parenthesis i'll actually give the a model attribute name which is user info in my case so i'll do command v right here and uh, this is the user info dto object i'm sending right so i'm going to remove this so 
I'll just directly create the user info DT object just right here. So I'll write space. Oops, one sec. I'll do user info DTO and user info DTO. Okay, cool. That's it. How many lines of code? This much we learned for the last one or two hours. Simple, right? All those lines of code I have replaced with a annotation called add model attribute. So the job of this add model attribute right here is we don't need to create a model object and we don't need to create user info DTO object separately. Here you are reading the user info DTO and sending it to the home page, right? So if there is any value present inside the user info DTO properties, that will be automatically binded with this user info DTO object right here. And now I'm sending this object to my home page with a reference called user info. Now, if I'll go to my home page, if I do command shift R again, if I'll open my home page, now here I have, I have given the reference here called user info, whatever I'm getting from the last page. So here I'm sending the same thing, right? User info. And that's the thing I'm pasting here, right? And after that, I'm using the spring MVC tag right here in order to paste the value from the user info object, whatever I'm sending from the previous page. I mean, sending from the controller getting it right okay so now let me test whether our things are working fine or not let me refresh this if you want you can change the value to if i do calculate okay again you can see the values are getting reflected the way it is getting reflected is these values are here inside the url parameter and right now if you go to our code this particular you know method is getting executed whenever we hit calculate and after that this model attribute is making sure all the URL parameter will be binded to this particular variable called user info DTO, which is of user info DTO type. And this object I'm transferring by giving it a reference called user info to my result page. If I go to my result page right now, this user info DTO will be available in my result page. So I'll go to my result page here and here from the user info, I'm directly fetching the username and from the user info, I'm directly fetching the crush name.